Hello and welcome to City Skylines. I am your humble host, Swifty Spider, aka Architect Nin, uh, aka Christopher Tarantola, depending on where you find me. And today we are going to play a new game. We're starting a new map. Um, don't worry, there will be plenty more of Jackson Hole, Wyoming coming to the uh, YouTube page. I am personally done playing that game mainly because I've blown up my my mods and assets um uh, for a couple reasons number one i'm uh doing discordia with zaris c zaris um you just say it zaris but i, I i'm telling you c zaris so that you'll know and number two um i wanted to get into vanilla because i know a lot of you guys y'all are on the console or y'all don't have all the dlcs you're not really ready to jump into doing modding and so this is going to kind of give you a slow introduction because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this city purely vanilla. I have a few mods on, but I'm going to show you that these mods are basically mostly for visual purposes. It's going to allow me to make it uh, look right for when I'm showing you guys on the video, particularly like the cinematic camera, things like that, so that I can just create a better experience on the videos that I'm making for you guys. Um, that being said, um, some of the other ones are quality of life and uh, anything that actually changes the gameplay I have eliminated I have if if you can look here no assets here okay I have just these mods so adaptive prop visibility so it allows me to see things that you might not be able to see a little bit further away um, advanced toolbar changes my toolbar just a little bit to, to, to make it more advanced um, chirpy exterminator, so I'm not going to be looking at chirpy at all. Uh, the cinematic camera, so I can make videos um, that look good uh, for you guys. The clouds and fog teller, so I can uh, mess with that a little bit. Um, CSL map view and CSL show more limits. These are th like that just allows you to export a map of the city. This just allows you to. Um, know what your limits are which I, I i'll be surprised if i actually have to worry about this one because uh we'll, we'll be doing it vanilla and so i won't be doing like 81 uh tiles mod yet um first person camera a hard mode is going to be on improved content manager uh less steam that just affects my my internet connection a loading screen mod that allows me to debug if i need it uh, no seagulls just so that we don't have that annoying sound um, sharp textures uh, just makes things look a little bit better uh, softer shadows same thing totally free camera uh, so i can uh, show you and, and and look in different ways than you might be able to look um a tree lod fix that's a, a, again a visual thing ultimate eye candy that's all visual and that's it all the rest of this stuff uh, is turned off. It's actually less vanilla than Discordia. So, and if you don't know what Discordia is, I'll have a link down in the description. Just take a look at that. Um, it's another series. Uh, it's really ran by another YouTuber, another guy. Uh, like I said, Zaris, and he's an awesome. Um, and I'm just kind of taking part in that, but I will be live streaming those and uh, you'll definitely want to uh, look at the schedule and see when I'm going to be doing my next live stream. Um, so now I'm done with my plug, let's go ahead and get this started on this game. So we're going to do a new game. And I think we have two rivers here. We have islands, um, shady strands, diamond coast, sandy beach. Lagoon Shore, Coda Falls. So oh, that's that we couldn't do that. That one's way too custom. I think we're gonna go with maybe two rivers or islands. Which one shall it be? Um, I think we'll start with islands here. Um, and uh, we're gonna name the city Nella City. Okay. And so the idea behind this, uh, let's play. It's gonna be a little bit more of a tutorial series um, so if you're pretty new to the game uh, this is going to be a little bit more for you if you've been doing it for a long time 
it, some of this might be a little bit asinine for you because I am going to be going over some of the basics of the game. Um, but as the game progresses, I think once I get to a, my target's going to be sixty, maybe eighty thousand people. Uh, once I have sixty or eighty thousand population, I want to start adding. Uh, by that time, we'll have enough population that we will have dealt with, you know, airports and and seaports and all the the different things that you're going to have to likely run into in the game. Um, and I think at that point we can actually start introducing uh, DLCs one at a time, just so we, we can see how that affects our gameplay. And then we'll even maybe start introducing some mods just a little bit at a time. Some really basic mods. I'm not going to go crazy with it. We're not going to be doing, you know, um, the kind of uh, we're not going to be doing zoning versus plopping, you know, that kind of thing. But just some basic mods that will affect things. Um, I say basic. Um, they're going to be more like a traffic manager, that kind of thing. I'm going to introduce them slowly, and so those will also all have tutorials on how to use those as I introduce them. And that'll be down towards the end of the thing. So if you just are going to stick with vanilla, you're not going to have any DLCs. You're going to be plenty out of the series to begin with. And then as the series progresses, we're going to add on complexity so that um, you can maybe add on complexity as you go as well. Um, and then if you have questions about it, you can always ask and that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's get started. So while this loads, I am going to just uh, pause the recording and I will see you on the other side. All right, and so now that we got our game open, we have Nilla City here. Um, could go ahead, pause. Oh, I'll let it run for a little bit. Um, but let's take a look at our city here. So, um, as you can see, my fog um, mod allows me to see all the way to the edge of the map, so it makes things a little bit clearer. And I think that's just going to be better for the video. It's also better for me as I build. I just enjoy it a little bit more. Uh, makes things a little bit easier. As we can see, we got a pretty fast moving river here um, that we're going to build along. Um, and then we have a bay here. We do have sea routes coming in and out from this direction here. And we also have, I think, a place for a dam that's going to uh, be available around here. And so we'll be able to see how dams are done. Um, you know, I, I know the map well enough, even though I don't have access to show you via the uh, natural resources uh, infographic here. But we have some ore here. Um, obviously here and here and here we have farming uh, or really fertile land. Um, here you have some oil. And then obviously where the trees are, you have forestry. And so we have abundance of resources um, on this map as well to do uh, plenty of industry. Now, um, here we don't actually have access directly to the freeway, um, and we won't get that until we buy the plot next to us, uh, the next square in the city. Um, but we're just going to start off with the one square, and to start off with, you know, people, this is what people always want to do is how do you start the game? Now, how you start your game, how do you, how you begin, depends a lot on what kind of game you're, experience you're looking for, right? So, some people, they want to be as efficient as possible. It doesn't matter about uh, anything else. Form follows function, period. Other people, they just, they don't know what they're doing and they just kind of throw stuff on there and... That may or may not work well. Um, and then, uh, if you're like me, the way I like to do it is I like to have it be functional. So, function is a big part of it, but I also I try and make it as realistic as I can um, with within certain limits. I mean, it's not going to be a hyper-realistic city. Um, certainly, we're playing vanilla, so your realism is only going to be so high there. But I do want to... Um, Try and make it as re pretty realistic, and I also want it to look good. I, I care about that. I'm also going to really think about um, how I'm going to do the city long term. So I'm not just thinking about my moves now. It's kind of like a chess game. Got to think, what am I going to do uh, when I 
expand? Which direction am I going to expand? Um, where am I going to put my industry? Where am I going to put my my town center? Um, where am I going to put my harbor? Um, and all of that stuff. I kind of try and think that through. So here's what I am thinking. So uh, since we have a good abundance of industry, we'll be able to do um, just regular goods industry. We're going to be able to do um, oil here. We're going to be able to do farming out there and possibly over here. Um, we're also going to be able to do uh, ore right here, and it's going to connect to that rail line eventually if you, we want. We have the rail line, if you can see, coming right through here. And so I'm pretty sure since we have the shipping lane coming right through here as well, that what we're going to do is we're going to have it connect to the shipping lane and put a harbor somewhere around here. Not a harbor, but a, uh, a cargo harbor. To be to be more precise, so we'll put our cargo cargo harbor right around here. Um, that's something to to keep out an eye out for, and we're also going to want this to be. I'm going to designate this as the east side of the city. Um, you know, when you have a city, typically there's the other side of the railroad tracks, whichever city you go to, and overwhelming majority, particularly this is America to be clear. Um, I don't know about Europe and other places, but America, the other side of the railroad tracks, typically is on the east side, and the reason for that it's it's quite interesting. Um, it's because the east side is typically when you had industrialization going on and you had a lot of factories and industry going on. Um, the prevailing winds through most of America go from the west to the east. And so the east side of the city was the dirty side of the city. It's the side of the city that nobody wanted to live on because of the smells and the, and the smoke and all that kind of thing. Even if you're just talking about uh, farm animals, you know, uh, living in a small town, or I say a small town, a small city in Lubbock, it's about 300,000 people, Lubbock, Texas. Um, every once in a while, when the wind shifts in the right direction, you do get a whiff of some of those farm animals. Um, and it's not the most pleasant smell. And so the other side of the railroad, tra railroad track, so to speak, if it's on the east side, is typically going to be the side that all those smells are going to go to for the vast majority of the time. Which is why you see poor, lower income, more impoverished communities typically on the east side of a city. Um, and, you know, test me on this. Go look at Chicago and all kinds of small towns all the way from St. Louis to um, New Orleans and anywhere in between. Um, the majority of these cities, I think it's something like 90%, um, don't quote me on the percentage, but a large majority, uh, this is how it works and that was why. So uh, we're going to replicate that in our city here. So I'm going to designate that as East Side, whether it really is or not, I have no idea. Um, but that is going to be the east side of our city for those reasons. And hopefully you get that. Uh, you don't think that's just pure useless information. Uh, I think that's enough bloviating for now, though. So let's talk about what we're going to do to start. So I think to start, what we want to do is I'm going to create sort of like a roundabout here. Um, ultimately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably have like an avenue that goes uh, along this axis here. And as I expand the city out, I'll probably have that avenue go up and over the um, freeway here, or maybe under the freeway, depending on how I want to do it. And I'll probably eliminate this connection as it stands. But for now, since I can't really touch that connection, um, I'm going to utilize it as best I can. I want to have kind of a flow going. So I'm going to have my industry kind of happen along the edge here, okay? And I'm going to have my residential come along the river here. And then I'm going to have my commercial go in the connections in between. So that's how I'm going to generally plan on my city. I'm going to segregate my industry from my commercial, from my residential. So to start off with, we just got to put, you, you have to put down just a normal road. And so that's, I'm just going to connect the two points there. And that gives us a few more options now that we have that. And so I'm going to go ahead and try and lay out a, a roundabout. So it's not going to be really a roundabout, but it, it's, it's going to function as a roundabout. 
It's going to be a roundabout that's not round, if that makes sense. So here we go. Um, I'm going to point, put this out by 12, which costs about 500. And I'm at an angle of 120 degrees. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to do it over here. So 120 degrees, um, cost of 500. That's 12 units. And there we go. You notice that I'm starting from here and I'm pulling out I'm starting from here and pulling out and you're like well Chris your roundabout if you're gonna have it it needs to go all in one direction don't worry I got a solution for that in a second okay you're gonna love that okay now I'm gonna uh, go over to my freeform road over here and I'm going to pull straight out at 180 degrees so that uh, it, it's nice and clean and I want to I want to roughly get in the center here. So what I'm going to need to do, I think what I, I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to uh, create another road here. And so I'm going to come about halfway through and try and be as parallel as I can. There we go. Um, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Maybe more like this. Uh, that worked much better. And then I'm going to come halfway through, and I'm going to draw this out. And that's going to kind of give me a center line to work off of. And I'm going to delete those because I'm not going to need them. I'm going to go over to my two-lane, one-way roads here. Go back to my freeform road. And so, like I said, I'm going to go 180 degrees out. But I'm going to make it to where it is perpendicular to this street here. You see that? I'm going to do the same thing over here. And it's not quite perpendicular, but it's pretty close. Certainly close enough for uh, the women I like to date. So, um, here we go. We're going to go ahead and bulldoze this. No longer need that. And so now we have a problem because our road directions aren't uh, going to work. That's going to be... A dysfunctional road so we're going to go over here to the upgrade road tool I'm going to make sure that we're clicked on the two lane one-way road and then i'm going to tr make that a one-way first of all and that is going the direction i want because i won't always want it to go um i i all my uh cities i drive on the right side of the road so if you're on the left side of the road uh driving like in england which is kind of weird to me but you know um you just gotta mirror everything I say here. So just assume that I'm not talking about the same side of the road if you're left-handed. So right-handed driving, you're going to want to typically keep this in a counterclockwise motion. It's basically, you want to be able to come in and turn right. That's essentially what you're looking for, okay? And so it's all good up to here. So what I'm going to do is, I can't upgrade to this type, but what I can do is, instead of left-clicking, I'm going to right-click and it changes the direction for me. Right click, right click, and I can click and hold it, and you notice it did it all at once. And so if I, I I'm gonna do it again just to show you, so I'm gonna just like click, and holding, and moving along. And so I don't have to just click, click, click. I can click and hold, and that can also create a little bit of efficiency in your workflow. All right, so now that we have our not round or it's more of a light bulb roundabout um, we're going to um, create a nice straight grid so here's what I'm gonna do I can just go back to my two-lane road I'm gonna go back to straight roads here and I'm gonna come straight off of this neck here okay and what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna try and keep it to where the grid um, you see the the, the blue area outside of the the road so you get the dark blue area and then you have the light blue area and that light blue area is showing where the grid is going to be now, it might be obvious for some of you but i bet you some of you that are watching this you're like oh that's what that's about and hopefully that helps you out a little bit so uh, and you also notice these um horizontal lines every so often along the 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 segment here what that is, is that's marking 12 units, 12 little squares along your grid. Um, and that's kind of like the base unit. And each of those cost $500 uh, on a flat level ground, as you saw there. 
Um, so this is four thousand dollars. That's forty. So that's uh, five times eight. So that's going to be eight segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight segments. There you go. Okay. So um, I'm uh, right now. It's going uh, really at ninety degrees to this road, but I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to toggle snapping here. I'm going to turn off all. Okay. And that obviously you notice that I don't have my twelve demar my my demarcations of every 12 units. And that's okay, I don't need that for right now. Um, so I'm just gonna pull it out straight here and I'm going to just make it as straight as I can to the edge of the city here. All right, that way I make sure I get all four up. I didn't get all four, I only got three. It's too close to the edge. So what I might need to do, I'm gonna bulldoze that, get my refund for that. And how far away do I need to be before I get my four? So there we go. I need to be right there. So I think the way we're going to have to do this is um, a bit like that. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn on my angle snap here. Uh, only the angle snap. I leave everything else off. And so now we can go 180. We can go perfectly 90 degrees. We can really create a nice regular grid. And so what I'm thinking is for this area, uh, of the city, it's going to be a really regular grid. Don't worry, we're going to get into curvy roads and how do we get away from that grid uh, later on, but not in this first episode, to be clear. So, now that I have that, um, I'm going to just build out here. Oh. I got to remember that I have limited money because I'm playing on hard mode. I only got $60,000 to play with so I don't want to go too far I'm actually going to turn all these back on um, and I'm just going to go out to here okay and then I'm going to go over to my medium roads and I'm going to put one four lane road here um, that's going to just come straight out now the problem is I want it to be r perpendicular to this road so how am I going to get that perpendicular to that road well, all I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to uh, come out perpendicular that way. And then I'm going to have to go back to my four-lane road here. Now, if I pull this out, I'm going to look, okay, if I pull that out, about where would it end up? And it's going to end up right about there. So that's where it would end up, but I think it'd be better to actually be right there. I'm going to pull it straight and perpendicular. And you notice how it wants to go to there, but if I pull it enough it's going to go back to to true back to square and so I'm going to go ahead and click right there and you notice that that little circle right there the little blue circle it used to be right here it went ahead and moved it over to where that intersection is and that's basically the node to marking the 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 segment the road segment there and so now I have uh, where my avenue is going to be and I, I have the directionality so that it's nice and everything can be perpendicular and I'm trying to create a nice regular perpendicular grid. This grid will be very perpendicular, but it's going to get messed up over the time, and I'll show you that in a little while. Don't worry too much about it. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the, the more perpendicular it is, obviously the more efficient it's going to be. Okay, now, uh, I'm not going to build any more avenue uh, for now because I don't want to spend too much money. It's not about how much money I spend here. It's about how much money I'm going to have um, in surplus or deficit. That's going to be the big maker or breaker of your city in the beginning. So in the beginning, we want to just create as much revenue as quickly as we can. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go out. I'm just going to pull it all the way out. Here, I'm just going to pull it all the way out over here. And um, this is a family-friendly show, so if you have some jokes rolling around in your head, please keep them to yourself. Okay, now, um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the road guides. They're going to be distracting. I'm going to keep the road angle on, though, uh, snapping. And we're just going to go, and you, you notice what I've done here is I made sure my circle, the edges of my circle are are at the right square so when I pull it up it's going to be perfectly uh, one square away uh, it's going to have the two grids touch um, 
and basically be clo plane or right there. And so that makes a complete grid right there. Now we don't want to do that for every single block. If you do that for every single block, you're going to have a hard time um, when you are trying to add schools and when you're trying to add uh, unique buildings and parks, you're not going to have enough space. Um, so you do want to do that as basically the regular part of the grid and then you're going to every once in a while want to have an irregular part of your grid um, to accommodate those larger uh, buildings in your city. Okay, and I'm going to do that for two segments and then I'm just going to delete everything else for now. Um, I'm not going to need it. I'm not going to need any of that. Um, and then we're just going to leave it at that. So let's go ahead and zone. Uh, we only have access to the low density zones at first. And so there's a couple ways you can zone. You got the uh, fill, you have the marquee, you can do a small or a large brush. Um, now you can experiment to see exactly how those work. I typically stick with either the marquee or the fill. Here, since it's such a regular grid, I can do a fill and it fills up the entire block, which is really nice and easy. Um, I can do it there and there, but look, it's going to fill it all the way over to here, and I don't want that. So here's what I do. I can pull it over here, and it will. It only goes so far, but it's still going further than I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my marquee tool here, and I'm just going to click and drag. Okay. Now, oops, I put it over here, and I didn't want it. What do I do? Well, I could go and click on D zone, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually right click. So I'm going to right click here and undo that zone. Just like that. Um, it's if you it's it's if you go to D zone, it'll be the same thing with a, a left click. But I find that your workflow goes a little bit faster if you just uh, right click and do it just like that. Um, it it just things go a lot faster, right? So let's go ahead and fix that up just like that. So that's where my zone is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and zone just a little bit of blue not too terribly much and it's basically just going to be along my avenue there and we can go ahead and get that section as well and then last but not least uh we'll need some industry um now when we do the industry uh it's going to be over here i'm actually not going to zone that yet because it's not going to come up for a little bit when it comes up then i'll zone it now we do need to worry about power so so here's the thing, uh, really I want my power to be over here um, on my my wind turbines. Now if you look at the wind turbine, um, the way I like to do my power, and excuse me, I'm going to take a drink real quick, is I'm going to go to my calculator here on my phone, or just whatever calculator you got, and I do some math here, so I'm going to have to keep this down here. It's harder for me to point, but I think you'll be able to get it. If you look up here, it says upkeep $100 per week. And it says output 0 to 8 megawatts. So we're going to have a, what's called a ratio. Uh, this is going to be basic math, so for some of you that are older, I apologize. I know you know this already. This is basically least common denominator if you got somebody that's um, still learning math in school. It's called a ratio. So $100 divided by 8 megawatts equals $12.5 um, per megawatt. Okay. Now if we go over here to the coal power plant, you do $700. I'm calling them dollars because I'm in America. Uh, they might be pounds or whatever, whatever it is. $700 divided by 40 megawatts equals 17.5 so that tells me that the coal power plant is going to cost more money per power than my wind turbine my wind turbine actually costs less money um, now let's think about this now the initial cost might be different so the, i'm just talking about the upkeep which is the one that matters to me more the initial cost is 23 thing and we can do the same thing so 23 750 Divide it by 40. Okay, that's 593.75. Okay, 593.75. We'll keep that in our heads and then we'll clear all this out. Or, yeah. 
Okay, now we'll do 7,500 divided by 8. That's 937. So, that tells me that this is cheaper to build per, to get the same amount of wing watts um, initially, but it's going to cost more per time. So in the long run, uh, in the short term, this is cheaper, and in the long run, that's cheaper. Eventually, the return on investment for this uh, wind turbine is going to come to me, um, and it's going to have a, a l larger return on investment uh, than if I just built this, but it's going to take a little bit of time to do that. Now, I could do math to figure out how much, but uh, I'm not going to do that uh, here. I'll let you figure all that out for yourself. Bottom line is, for me, I stick to wind turbines because they are more efficient money-wise, and that's what matters to me in the early game the most. So the nice thing about this is I can place down a wind turbine wherever I please. And you notice the wind here, so we're going to do it uh, where it tends to be uh, windier because otherwise... If you see our estimated production goes down, you want that to be at 8. If it's not at 8, it's not worth doing, right? Okay, so let me get my bearings. I lost my bearings. Oh, uh, so I was doing it over here, but no, I want to do it over here in this little area. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do it kind of relatively close. We're going to do it, if, if the avenue is going to come here, we're going to do it just off to the side of the avenue so there's enough room. For things to happen okay I'm looking at this red circle which is the noise pollution area so I want to keep it about right there because if I do it closer to where the Avenue is going to be it's going to get into where I'm going to be putting my residential and that noise pollution really kills my residential so I don't want that so I'm going to keep it over here like this and there's my a production so that's where I'm going to start because it's as close to where I'm starting my city as possible I'm going to be have to use as little power lines as possible, which is going to save me on maintenance costs. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it on over like this, and I'll bring it to about right there. I'm going to bring it just behind where the grid is, so that I'm not interrupting the grid. I'm going to go ahead and do it all along the edges here. Um, so some of the stuff in the inside might take a while, but it's going to seed along the outside here where it has its power and it'll go ahead and uh, go in. Now we're also going to need water, so we need to look at which way is the water flowing. So the water's flowing uh, from here and going out to sea and out this way. So if we put the pump over here and then we put our sewer over here, that's going to be problems because the sewer is going to eventually get into our water supply and make everybody sick and die and then you're going to have a disaster on your hands. Uh, now, conversely, if we put the water pump over here, or even if we put it like over here, which is where I'm going to do it, it's going to be as close to my power as I can make it. And then if we go ahead and put our outlet as close to the edge of the city as we can, um, looks like there's a limitation because that's the literally the edge of our city is on the riverbank here. So that's where we're going to do it, right there. I'm going to make sure to... Uh, start our grid here so I'm gonna actually start it with the city not uh, with the water pump or anything like that and I don't get too particular with how I lay out my uh, water pipe grid because it just uh, I find that the time investment is not worth it so you know some people they like be right on the end whatever just just get it to work and um, nobody's really gonna be looking at that uh, it's not going to make your city look better, so just get it done, okay? And that'll work just fine right there. And I made sure to connect both to my sewer and to my water. Now, one thing that uh, I will tend to forget a lot of times is you want to make sure you also have your power connected to your pump and to your your sewage pump there, okay? So now that we got that, we got power, we got water, we got a road, and we got zoning. What else do we need? Absolutely nothing. So let's let this baby fly. All right, guys. So 
that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, would you do me a favor and uh, hit that like button, hit the share button, uh, maybe do the little icon to get notified every time I do a new thing in this series. Also, leave me a comment. Tell me what uh, questions you might have. Tell me what you think about the series and if you have anything else that you'd like to see me do. Thanks, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.